have. <laughs> All right, everyone. We've got an exciting, exciting guest on the show today. Amy Valpone is the author of the best-selling cookbook, Amy's first cookbook, Eating Clean, the 21-day plan to detox, fight inflammation, and reset your body, and the editor-in-chief of the healthyapple.com. She's a Manhattan celebrity chef, culinary nutritionist, professional recipe developer, food photographer, writer, motivational speaker, specializing in simple gluten-free, soy-free, and dairy-free clean eating recipes. Also healed herself from a decade of chronic pain, including Lyme disease, ovarian syndrome, hypothyroidism, which we got to talk about, adrenal fatigue, leaky gut, healthy metals, and much more exhausting thousands of doctors in the country and Mayo Clinic's. She shares her story of how clean eating and detox saved her life and inspires you to clean up your food, too. Her work has also appeared on Martha Stewart, ABC News, Fox News Health, WebMD, The Huffington Post, The Food Network, Glamour Magazine, Clean Eating Magazine, Self Magazine, Prevention Magazine, PBS, and many others. So, there we go. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Amy. I'm so excited to have you on today. You are hi. Your you. story is so amazing. We're gonna learn so much today about how to detox food, how to detox your life. And this is such an important conversation that I think we all need to be having. And also it's a really um controversial one still, wouldn't you agree? Oh yes, very controversial. I mean, I still read articles that have been out even recently that say you don't need to detox that. That's what our, you know, our bodies are made to do. And, and I agree that with the fact that our bodies are made to detox. And that's why we have livers and, um, you know, everything should be working. But, you know, we're not living in the, you know, 1800s anymore. It's, you know, 2016 and we are bombarded by more toxins than ever before with, you know, our food covered in plastic to the toxins in our sunscreen, our chapstick, our shampoo, our laundry detergent, our dish detergent. Um, you know, I was at my parents a few weekends ago, and now after, you know, detoxing so much, my sense of smell is, like, unbelievable. And so I was in the kitchen, and I could smell this, like, perfume, and I'm like, what is that? And no one could figure it out. And I opened up the trash, and my mother had bought garbage bags that had Febreze, like, perfume in them. And I was like, <sighs> You can't do that, <laughs> you know, like because our whole house is just like super clean. And I, I it's amazing how sensitive you start to become. Um, and it's just amazing. But like these chemicals are hidden everywhere. And, you know, I through my book and, and throughout my work, I, I never want to scare anyone or instill fear in anyone. Really what it's about is really just educating people about you know, what is out there and how there's toxins lurking in all of these different things that we really don't even know about. Yeah. And I think that's really important. This whole, we're not trying to scare you with this interview. We're not trying to make totally. your life more complicated than it likely already is. But that's also kind of where I really want to go with this interview in terms of how do we make this simple how do we know where to even find the right information? And then how do we start implementing it into our lives? Because this, this stuff is so important. And we're going to touch on all those things later. But first, I just want to get a sense from you, like what put you on this path? Because I know we have sort of similar, you know, health scares and all these things that made us realize, holy crap, this is so important, so much more important than maybe we knew. Definitely. So, I mean, I was here in Manhattan working in corporate America and knew nothing about, you know, food. I mean, I was not out eating McDonald's and smoking cigarettes. I was eating, you know, chicken and spinach and very, very healthy. And one day, you know, at, at my job, my legs started retaining about 40 pounds of fluid. And long story short, I went to a cancer hospital here in New York because my doctor had taken sent to the emergency room and they found my white blood cells were like point like two, which means I should have been dead. And wow. so they literally sent me to the cancer hospital because they thought I had leukemia right away and bent me over and gave me a bone marrow biopsy because they thought I had leukemia. And I mean, I was 22 maybe at the time I was 
scared half to death. I had no idea what was going on. They had just pulled me out of my corporate office. And um, turns out I did not have leukemia, but my body, my whole immune system, everything was so suppressed. My bone marrow was a mess. My liver enzymes were in the 400s, normal like 38. I mean, they, it looked like I was an alcoholic. Um, my hemoglobin, my platelets, my red blood cell count, my white blood cell, I mean, it looked like I was about to die. And so for the next few years, I spent every other week getting about 20 vials of blood at the cancer hospital while they tried to figure out what was going on with me. And I just kept getting sicker and sicker and no one acknowledged my food. No one even talked about nutrition. And so I started to understand what I was putting into my body. And I went back to school to study, you know, integrative and functional medicine, which is really about how to get to the root cause of what's going on in your body. Instead of going to a doctor and then handing you a drug, which I was on, steroids, painkillers, water pills, and even morphine, because I was given 24 hours to live with C. diff colitis. I said, I cannot live like this for the rest of my life. And they sent me out to Mayo Clinic for a whole week. I did a whole week's workup. And then they came to me at the end of the week on Friday, and they said, your insurance won't cover you every anymore. We've run every test imaginable, and we have to dismiss you. And it was probably the lowest point in my life. And um, I just said to myself, this is crazy. I can't be on these drugs. You know, I'm 22-year-old, like, vibrant young woman just starting my life. And okay, that's so when let's paint this picture. Let's paint this picture. You show up, you're like sick to death. They tell you you have leukemia. That's not quite the right diagnosis, which leaves you wondering what the hell is it? You're getting all these blood tests, whatnot. Your insurance is like, we're not going to cover it anymore. And now you're probably thinking, what the F? <laughs> exactly. I was like, this is crazy. And the funny thing is no one believed me and everyone thought I was crazy. They all thought I was anorexic. Mm -hmm. um, because I was thin and they all thought I had an eating disorder. They all thought that I was crazy. I mean, I told one, I went to some healer doctor and this is before I even got into energy medicine and any of that. And she said, I think you have Lyme disease. And so I went to my regular doctor and I said, hi, this woman thinks I have Lyme disease. And he was like, what kind of, you know, which doctor were you seeing? And I was like, what, like, what is all this? And he handed me a prescription for, um, I don't even know what they're called because I've never taken one of the drugs, but like a something for depression. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, wow. this is crazy. And so I ended up on disability from my job, too sick to even go into work. And, um, you know, I was termed sick girl in my corporate office because I was at a different doctor every day. Everybody from vascular surgeons to, you know, every hematologist in Manhattan, um, I mean, you name it, I went to them to try to figure out what was going on. And um, no one could figure it out. Everyone had guesses, but no one really knew. And so I had to say to myself, uh, when I was laying in the hospital bed with 24 hours to live, I said, um, if you survive, then, then you have to promise yourself that you'll dedicate the rest of your life to helping other people figure out what's wrong and you'll get to the root cause of what's wrong with your body. And so um, wow. I did. <laughs> and did. Um, so it is. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that. Well, it, um, you know, and that was just the beginning of a, a whole nother journey. So exactly. And I'm sure, you know, when I was diagnosed with cancer too, at a very young age at 22, about to graduate from college, you know, one of the things I realized very quickly was that my food definitely had something to do with it. Definitely. Yeah. But what was so frustrating to me was when I asked the doctors, okay, so like, what can I do? Because I'm a very proactive guy. You know, if I need to like heal something or fix something, like I'm going to do it, period. But when I asked my doctors, you know, okay, like, what can I eat? What should I be avoiding? What should I, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. None of them had any answers practically. Or they basically just said, oh, don't worry about it. You know, <laughs> chemotherapy is going to take care of it. The radiation is going to take care of it which I'm not knocking Western medicine, and I want to talk about this too, the importance of Western medicine. However, Completely. when it's not balanced with this other form of living, which is literally like the food you're taking into your mouth is changing your genetic code, you know what I mean? And no doctor can talk to you about it intelligently. That's a problem. It is a problem, and it's really sad, and I agree completely, too. I, in my book, I did not want to bash Western medicine at all because you break your leg, you get in an accident. You know, they're wonderful for trauma. You're having a heart attack. Amazing. But 
when you have underlying imbalances in your body and things are going on, they don't know how to put the pieces together. They're just not taught that. They have maybe an hour of nutrition you know, knowledge in them from medical school. And so you have to go above and beyond that. And what the hardest thing for me to do in my 20s living in Manhattan by myself, you know, supporting myself was that I had to say, if you're going to get people that are going to help you, you have to start going to doctors that don't take insurance and that are not in network and that understand what's going on inside the body, not just someone who's going to say, OK, here's your copay, here's a drug and you can kind of go off. So I had to start to do the research and figure out what was really going on in my body and who could help me in that sense. And um, I don't know if you felt this, um, but I felt like every year or every few months they would discover something else. Um, like for mm -hmm. my Lyme disease, it was, you know, undiagnosed for 15 years. But before they found out, it was heavy metals. And then like a year later, they found mold accumulation. And then they found, you know, Epstein-Barr. And then it was like hypothyroidism and leaky gut and candida. And I was just like, I mean, I felt like I was crazy. I literally felt like I was crazy because my friends would say, what's wrong with you? And I'd be like, oh, now it's candida. Or, oh, now it's this. And people start to think you're nuts. They're all out drinking beer and having pizza, and you're kind of like living on kale. No, I know, and it's horrible. And and the problem is, is that most of these things then produce another thing. So mine was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and then my immune oh. system was so suppressed that I got Lyme disease again, and now that's, you know, gone. But now I have hypothyroidism, which was, you know, in some ways a result of the radiation, which now that I believe is gone too. But, you know, it, it they compound on each other, you know, and yeah. one thing I think we should talk about, and maybe we can talk about now is this, well, this idea of like, this stuff can get expensive, you know what I mean? Like, it's so many people's oh excuse God, for, totally. like, for like organic and eating good food is like, it's expensive. And I'm just sitting here thinking like, literally my body is worth a million dollars plus in like medical bills so oh my gosh Com don't tell completely. me it's completely i feel like i spend more money on my health than anything in the food that i eat on anything yeah. i mean i go to energy healers like or like you know acupuncture things like that a few days a week and it's like a hundred dollars a pop i mean it's not cheap and if you told me to do this in my 20s i would have never done it because i was like no way i would never spend that amount of money but when you see that it works and especially eating organic and you know i think that's one of the biggest messages in my in my work is i don't want people to think that i'm telling you to eat this way or live this way because you should because you can do whatever you want but once you see life this way you'll never go back when you see how good it feels to feel good or better than good why would you ever settle for anything lower and, and when you wake up be able to heal yourself in the process. Yeah, and when you wake up every morning, I'm 33 years old now, I wake up in the mornings and I feel amazing and I'm like, is this what people feel like every day? Like, this is this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just, I mean, and I'm just coming out of feeling sick, so, I and my book just came out, so I'm taking the summer to kind of like relax and enjoy my life and and live. Everyone's like, what's next? Where's your next book? What's next? And I'm like, you know what's next is is having fun and playing more and and doing things that I couldn't do for ten years when I was in bed. I'm in no rush to have another book or have another you know go go go. And I feel like a lot of people get caught up. They have to keep doing 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 to feel successful. But really, you know that pushes our bodies. And I'm not going back to where I was. I love that. And obviously, we're coming at this from a place of literally it was life or death figuring some of this stuff out but how do you then sort of relay that importance to someone where maybe it's not life or life or death yet <laughs> but who knows totally. what could be happening i mean i'll just put this in a perfect context you know it's funny like the convert the the arguments i get in with with my fiance for <laughs> example are literally about like the dumbest thing like food i'm like babe like the gluten, come on. And she's like, there's no proven research scientifically that gluten, and I'm like, yes, there is. And she's like, no, there isn't. And then it's like, so this is a really hot, hot item for people, you know? And mm -hmm. it's really um can get very contentious at times. And so my first question is, for anyone listening, is, which, because I'm just kind of thinking about what they might be thinking, you know, is 
number one, what makes you the expert? Like, how do you know any of this is true? And number two, where do you actually go for the real information? Because there's so much shit out there. It's so hard to even know who's trying to sell you what and what is true. And like, the end of the day, you just get frustrated and you're like, you know what? I will just eat gluten because there aren't any studies that show me this and that. When intuitively, you know that there might be something off about it. You know, it's so funny. Um, I was just out with one of my good friends um, the other day and she's a medical doctor. And she's like, t she was telling me about how this woman, one of our good friends, was not feeling well for a few years. And I was like, I never knew that. She was like, she was so sick. And, they, and I was like, well, how did she get better? Because... I had no idea. She's like, oh, she just cut out gluten. And she was like passing out, throwing up. Like, I mean, I've never even heard these effects. And I was like, I hate people like that. <laughs> like, I was like, some people can just be like, oh, yeah, I cut out dairy and like I'm perfectly perfect or I cut out gluten. Right. But it's, and I'm like, yeah, I wish it was that easy for me. It took like, you know, ridiculous amounts of time and money and so much pain. But I also think it just goes to show like, I, and now that I, I, I realize that about this woman, I'm just like, oh, my God, like, it's amazing. All of our bodies are so different. Some people can, like, smoke cigarettes and eat pizza and drink beer until they're 90, and they look freaking like they're alive. And then there's other people, like myself, if I had, like, a sip of beer, I would have candida, like, throughout my body. I'd be looking like I was pregnant. I would be so sick for weeks. And so... You know, and then there's an in-between, too. Some people just get bloated after they eat something or – and they just forget about it, and they'll eat Tums or they'll have Mylanta or they'll pop an Advil for their headaches. And so I did this for years. I just kept popping things, and so I never listened to myself. And if we just start to listen to ourselves, the problem is we're all so busy. So when I was working at Vogue magazine, you know, I had, like, five minutes to get to the doctor and back. I would take the Advil or I'd take the antibiotic or I'd take whatever because I was, that's how I was brought up. I was brought up like you're sick, you take an antibiotic, you have a headache, you take an Advil, you have a stomachache, you take a Tums. And now I'm like, I haven't touched an Advil in 10 years. I don't need Advil. And I, if you told me that like 10 years ago, I would have laughed in your face because we're taught that these things are all okay. And then we're also you know, kind of brainwashed in a way to listen to every magazine or website telling us to be vegan, paleo, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, sugar-free, you know, eating lettuce and dieting and counting calories, don't count calories. Like, no one knows what to do anymore. And so it's really about listening to your body. I mean, my father can wake up at, you know, when I go visit, visit my family, he'll wake up at like 7 a.m. And at like 12 o'clock, I'm like, did you eat breakfast? He's like, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm like, if I didn't eat within an hour of waking up, I would pass out. Like, you know, and so I'm like, somebody feed me or we're all going to die. Like, it's it's not fun. So it just goes to show how we're all so, so different. You know, one time I was out to eat with my family and um, we got like a, a stomach bug from something we ate at the restaurant and everybody was sick. And my family was like dying. Like, every, they were crying. They were, and I was just like totally fine. And they were like, did you not get hit? Like, what happened? And I'm like, oh, no. Like. I'm pretty sick, but this is like what happens. Like I am so used to this. My tolerance to pain is so strong. Like you just get one of these stomach aches. Like this is how I live. And they couldn't eat. They were like, this is, I'm like, yeah, it's like having the flu. And so I would say to people, I used to go on these press trips and there were bread baskets in front of me and people were like, oh, you're so good for not eating bread. And I was always like, what? Like, it's not about being good. Mm. If you ate bread and you felt like you had the flu for a week, would you ever eat bread ever again? Right. Like it's, it's more, it's, but it's about listening to your body, right? Some people just don't listen. They get bloated or they have joint pains. They don't think anything is connected. And what we're now realizing is everything is connected. And so, you know, all of these different foods, all these different things that were these toxins that we're putting in our body are having an effect on us, you know, whether we can feel it right away or not. Totally. And I love this idea that, you know, listening to your body, it's so important because like you're saying, everybody's body is different. And I think it's important for me to hear too, because I try to like push, you know, sort of best practices on like the people I love the most because I'm like, ah, oh, totally. it's like so wired in me that like literally gluten is like, possibly death for me you know what i mean yeah, so, but yeah. that doesn't mean it is for everyone else but it's true i also want to give the readers or the 
readers, <laughs> the listeners, and also the readers of your book, hopefully, because you guys got to check out the book. There's no way we could cover everything that's in that book. It's maybe one of the best books I've read on this subject in a long time because it's so practical. And literally, it doesn't just talk about food. It talks about the things in your life, too, like down to like detergents and soaps. Like I literally made a list of like all kinds of crap that I have to go out and like get you know what i mean and then and, and totally well you know and, we don't realize our skin is our biggest organ so right? we exactly. eat clean and then we put like neutrogena on our skin because neutrogena is advertised as healthy but when you flip it over it's all chemicals or like lubriderm or chapstick or makeup or deodorant yes. like we put deodorant like right here next to our breasts and it's all aluminum yes and then we then we end up with heavy metals and we're toxic and we have all these gut and, and head it, like migraine issues and you know dark black circles in our eyes and, and the doctor is just giving us a drug and it's like no you're full of heavy metals okay so you know so this is perfect let's start here with this kind of subject because <laughs> what i don't want people to leave this podcast thinking is like great now i'm aware of all the horrible things and everything but i have no idea where to go to like get the good stuff you know what i mean totally. so in terms of like those kind of household needs like laundry detergent i was even reading in your thing the sheets you know sheets mm -hmm. have like things in them apparently that mess with you give, give yeah an like in your book. and then and mattresses i didn't yeah. even realize mattresses like the flame retardants we spend half of our i mean this is something i just realized in the last year i got an organic mattress and organic bedding which and organic towels, which is more expensive than like rent. It's, it's insane. But mm. I had to do, we spend half our day in bed and we right. don't realize, and the skin, we're con our contact on our skin. Um, but there's um, like Naturepedic is an amazing brand. So our pillows, you know, so I got my pillows and mattress from them. And then sheets like uh, Koyuchi, C-O-Y-U-C-H-I is incredible. They have um, like sheets and blankets and pillows and even stuff for kids, which is, is amazing. Okay, great. So we've covered that. Now, what about like, <laughs> like the face wash and the lotions and the shampoos? Like, where would you suggest? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, um, I mean, Whole Foods Market is great. They have a lot of um, amazing products. Um, and there's a lot of websites now online that are organic, but with products, natural products, like your skin, like I wrote in my book, organic isn't like it is with food. So you really have to read the labels. But I love One Love Organics. Uh, Tata Harper. It? It's called One Love Organics. One Love Organics, okay. Yeah, they're great. Um, Tata Harper is great, another great one for skincare. Um, How do you spell that? T-A-T-A -A space H-A-R-P-E-R. -E okay. Um, and then Now Foods has great like toothpaste, you know, because toothpaste is all chemicals, mouthwash. Um, and I list all in the back of my book, I have like three pages of all the brands and all their websites of the personal care products, home, food, all that kind of stuff in there too. Yeah. Um, but there's, I'm trying to think of some other, um, Barleen's is a really great brand. They have, um, I just use their coconut oil to brush my teeth. Um, I also use it as a moisturizer. You can use it as a sunscreen. So I have recipes on how you can make your own, um, beauty products too. Um, and your own personal cleaning products, you know, which seventh generation is amazing. I use seventh generation for my cleaning products, but I also use them for, um, my dish detergent, my laundry detergent. Um, dryer sheets, you know, all these things that are full of chemicals that we, we really don't even realize. And again, this is not to instill fear in anyone. You know, you're surrounded by chemicals every day, car exhaust, tap water, plastics surrounding your food. You know, it's, it's, you have to live in a bubble to avoid them all. But you can be mindful of how you can reduce your body burden on a daily basis and what you can do to really take charge of your health and to just lessen the body burden of these toxins that you're being bombarded with. Because everything at the end of the day is, it has to go through your liver. So mm -hmm. the less work your liver has to do, removing all these toxins, the healthier you'll be. Totally, and like, you know, this is the thing I realized changing some of this stuff dramatically for myself, is that once it's set up, once you have it in place, it's not that hard. No, and once you go and buy the toothpaste tube, I mean, how often do you buy a tube of toothpaste? 
every two months, three months, maybe like just go buy it and then don't worry yeah, about it anymore. Totally. You know what I mean? And a lot of this stuff is cheaper, like using coconut oil. Like I just use coconut oil for my makeup remover. I use it for my sunscreen. I use it for my toothpaste. I use it for, I mean, my mouthwash. I do oil pulling. Like it's cheaper than going and buying um, makeup remover, eye makeup remover, which is full of chemicals and buying like sunscreen. You know, it's like, it's just, just crazy. regular coconut oil. Yeah, it's like an SPF five, so you have to do a little bit more. But sunscreen is really important too. There's a company called Beauty Counter that makes a great sunscreen, or Badger makes another good sunscreen. Um, who else? Uh, Goddess Garden is another one that's a, a good sunscreen. I put a, I put a lot of them in my book. Yeah. Um, and for for women, you know, Beauty Counter is is and Tata Harper are both great for makeup because makeup is full of chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, but deodorant is a huge one. So, I mean, because you're putting that on your body every day. Um, but, I mean, the best thing that you Where can do, do is deodorant. <laughs> deodorant. Um, let's see. Who? Oh, Herbavia. ERB. Hold on. What is the name of it? I have it right here. Um, ER. This is the brand right here. Well, this is their this is their room spray. But they have a deodorant. So, the brand, it's E-R-B-A-V-I-V-A. -V -V -A. The deodorant looks just like this, but it's not called room spray. Um, but it's, I love her stuff. And also Schmidt's deodorant is really great. Nice. Okay, guys, I yeah, hope so that was tactical enough for you. I feel like that was a lot, but, but seriously, yeah, right yeah. there, if you guys need to go back and rewind and pause and whatever, get, just get this stuff set up. You know, if this, if this resonates with totally. you, because we really don't know like how, how crazy this stuff can affect us. Now, uh, what about water? Oh gosh, you know that's so funny. That's the part of my book that I had to cut out. I put some of that, uh, some a little bit about water in my book, but uh, I had to cut a lot about about, about the um, water filtrations because it's so intense. But uh, it'll be in my next book. Um, I use the Berkey filter for the water. I have a link for it on my website. Actually, it's amazing. I have the travel one, so you just fill it up every day, and then you can bring it with you when you travel. It's amazing. Okay. Um, but what I was going to say before is that all this stuff can be overwhelming, and like I wrote in my book. You know, towels and I mean, for women, like tampons, pet, like those are, they're full of chemicals. So you have to buy like organic pads and tampons, like things that you don't even think about you're putting in your body or on your body are full of chemicals or on your baby. And so, you know, it's so important. But what you really, my best advice so you don't get overwhelmed is think about what you are interacting with on a daily basis. Toothpaste. Yeah face wash, your laundry detergent because it's on your clothes every single day. You know, what are you coming into contact with every day? You know, other things can take, you can take more time, but like your shampoo, your conditioner, your body wash, like your makeup, these are the things that you need to, you know, think about on a daily basis. For sure. And that's why I wanted to start there. I think, I think that's brilliant. And it's so funny, literally after reading your book, I'm like, you know, putting on hand soap and like shit and like putting on <laughs> face wash. Like, I know. Sometimes I'm like in an office and I'm like, oh shoot, do I not wash my hands or do yeah. I use chemicals? So I'm well, like, eh. and I want to talk <laughs> about a little bit out. How do you balance like sort of the the obsessive nature that this can become with like living your life? You know? Oh gosh, I'm not obsessive about it at all. I mean, I my life is. I think my life is very simple. If someone saw my life, they'd probably think it wasn't. I mean, I used to have like a a rebounder and an infrared sauna and I used to sleep on a biomat. I mean, my life used to be like a complete medical hospital and I got all of that out when I moved because I need to start living my life. Um, I mean, I eat 100% organic. That's number one for me. I just would not touch anything that wasn't organic because I can feel the effects of it right away. I get a headache. And so once you start to see what changes that you feel, you never want to go back to the other ways. But I mean, it's very hard for me to eat out. I can't drink. Um, it's not that I can't. It's just that, like, my liver enzymes are, are finally normal for the first time in, like, 13 years. So I have a chance, you know, having crazy liver enzymes ever again. And drinking just doesn't make me feel good. I feel like crap the next day. So you just start to put – but my life is amazing. I mean, I live in Manhattan, and, like, I had so much fun doing none of those things that I did before. So it's really about finding your own way and finding out what makes you happy and surrounding yourself with people who understand this lifestyle. Because if you're surrounding yourself with people who are drinking and smoking and going out and partying every night and making fun of you, 
then those aren't like people who really accept you. Yes. And that's, that's a huge point I want to touch on real quick because I think there's this almost, I lost a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah. There's almost this embarrassment sort of, of like, Oh, oh my God. Free. Yeah. And people are like, Oh, you're gluten free. Oh, you're one of those. And I'm like, why is that weird? Like, yes, I, it's I'm not, gluten free. It's not Who cares? Weird. You know what? So this will, is going to be a big part of my next book. Because I'm realizing now I've had to do a lot of inner work to figure out how to finally heal. And you start to realize that it's their shit. It's not yours. And of course, yeah. they have, they're insecure. And it's almost like they're fearful of their health and your health and you're changing. There's this book I'm reading right now, Sacred Choices, and it talks about when you leave, like, we're all in these, like, tribes, right? Like, friends, you're in a family's tribe. But when you do something that's, like, different from what your tribe wants you to do, everybody all of a sudden is like, you're not eating gluten. What do you mean? That's so stupid. Like, because they're fearful of it. So it really revolves all around fear. But if you just tell yourself, like, you know, I just need to surround myself with positive people. And I think a really big part of the way I'm moving with my website, um, which is going to be redone in a few months, and also my next book, is that once you start to figure this out in here and figure out who you really are and do things for yourself, it's really like self-love and self-care, as silly as it sounds. Everything inside, everything on the outside of you mirrors the inside of you. Oh, yeah. So when you're having conflict in your life, you're really having conflict inside. And this is something, I'll be very honest, I never believe. I was like, what the heck is that? And then I started, like, meditating and doing all this, and I was like, holy cow. Things that bother you and other people are really things that bother you and yourself. Like, you know, it's really it, – and you start to realize life is just this big, like, mirror. Oh, yeah. And what are we all doing here? Like when you go through some of this, you're all you're like, what the hell am I doing here? Why am I living? Like, what is all this? And so that's going to be a big part of, of the way I'm moving forward with my work, because I think food is a huge part of it. But it's not everything right. The mind body is a huge component as well. And I think also like in just getting yourself to heal, you know, you have to start to understand you know, how you can get yourself out of this mindset and let that negativity and those negative people just go because new people will fall into place. I lost a ton of friends. I couldn't go to any weddings or bachelorette parties. And some people get mad and, and you just, you're like, really? They just yeah. don't understand. That's what it is. They don't understand. Yeah. And you know, we're not making them bad or good either. It really is just a totally. different intention really is all it is. And like you're saying, you know, the reason why this, this conversation is so important because, you know, my work is all about the mind, right? Like kind of fixing your mind, healing that, the inner yeah. world. But once you start doing that, you are naturally going to want to treat your body differently. It's just a raising level of consciousness where you realize it's all connected, literally. You know, like if I put this into my body, it affects the way my mind works, which affects the way I think about myself, the world around me, which then creates a new reality, which then spins out into an existence that you likely are not becoming. Mm -hmm. Really are meant to be. Or who we need to have a talk about all this. This is, I bet we're both reading some good books about all this. It's amazing, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, this is like, I mean, that's where my work lies in particular. And um, it's, but this conversation about food and all that cannot be left out because it literally is all connected. So speaking of this food now, now again, what are just, could you give us some like general best practices, things to avoid, things to really invest in? And, but also I want to really, I also really want to know how do you know, number one, and two, where do people go if they want to research this stuff on their own? Because it's so confusing and no one knows where to get the right answers. Definitely. So I've worked with over 500 doctors. Um, so my book and all my information is just a com like kind of a combined effort from what, everyone, what I've taught, from um, what I've been taught. And so the doctors who um, where to go for information, uh, the people, I you know, you have to be very careful where you're getting information. But... Mark Hyman is a great doctor, so his website is, is fabulous. He's written, like, I think 13 best-selling books. Um, so Dr. Mark Hyman. Uh, Dr. Frank Lippman has some great information on his website. Um, Dr. Kelly Brogan, um, is, is, she's great. She does a lot for um, depression. Um, she just came out with a New York Times best-selling book. She's wonderful. 
Um, those are three, I think, pretty top authorities that I really like and I really admire. Um, just doctors that really, they're medical doctors, they understand, you know, they're MDs. Um, they understand the body. They've, they've gone to medical school, but they've gone beyond medical school, and they understand functional and integrative medicine. Um, so I get a lot of information from reading, you know, reading their books or working with them, talking to them, understanding from them. But now I'm more... Mark, it, Mark wrote the foreword to your book, right? He did, yeah. I was so grateful. He's wonder. He's such an inspiration. He's yeah, really, he's really a wonderful person. For sure. So yeah. what about like websites or things like that? Definitely. Like, so all I go right to their websites. They're the websites that I go to. Um, you know, if I need to look up research or anything like that, I'll just um, you know, source them. Um, but other websites I really don't go by for information. Magazines, websites, I don't I don't trust other and other people. Except um, your own, which is amazing. Well, no, it's I honestly I it's not even that I'm an authority. I just I just write what has helped me and what helps a lot of my clients. Um and what I've found that really works and from working with all these doctors what I've learned I've had I mean I've had so many different health issues that I just like learned all these different things and at the end of the day like sometimes I'm like oh I feel like I don't even know anything and then I start talking at a presentation and people are like oh my god you're full of information and I'm like really yeah. this is just what I know like it's just online programs and um, doing a lot on my website that that will be up on my new site in about two months or so so I'm really Your excited website? for that your website yeah. so people can find it is uh so it's thehealthyapple.com yeah it's a great website and you know thank you what I, what's exciting about you is that you're and i don't like saying a real expert but because i think we're all experts in our own way an expert is really a student first you know but you are a trusted resource let's put it that way so i feel thank very you. um good about getting information from people like you which is why you're on the episode today so thank you it means so much to me thank you so much yeah so thank you for you know kind of saying where these sources come from so if anybody out there is like oh, i still don't believe it i want to know more you can go find it out there okay totally. <laughs> but, because because and you know what i honor that um inquisitive nature of anyone who might think that or mm -hmm. anyone who really wants to do their own research i honor that and i you know commend you for that so totally and all that, of our bodies are so different i mean there's supplements that are amazing for some people and that like make other people feel awful so you have to stop listening to what every new superfood is stop listening to what every new magazine and website is telling you to do it's like just eat real whole one ingredient foods like get back to basics Really, totally. like stop eating out of a can, stop eating boxed, like processed foods and eat whole food. And who cares what people are saying to you or if the waiter looks at you like you're crazy when you can't have gluten or dairy or soy or sugar or whatever it is. I mean, if I can live like this for 11 years in Manhattan, you can do it anywhere. Mm. And once you see how good life can feel, like you'll never go back to your old ways. You know, why would you want to be puffy and tired and exhausted every day, you know? Yeah. And now, obviously, we've set this presupposition that everybody's body is different and we know that and but could you kind of lay down sort of the general things that you might want to avoid no matter who you are and where you're living definitely so i mean staying away from processed foods is number one they're super inflammatory so again getting back to calorie counting 100 calories in an oreo or a 100 calorie pack of Oreos is not the same as 100 calories or even 200 calories in an avocado, right? One is super inflammatory. It's all white flour that's going to turn right to sugar. One is like super healthy fats and it's anti-inflammatory. You know what I mean? So it's like eating a peanut, which is peanuts are inflammatory, very high in mold, and a walnut, which is full of omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory. So it's about, it's not even just about the food group. Like I have clients that come to me and say, oh, I eat nuts. And I'm like, what are you eating? And they're eating planters, honey, roasted peanuts, which are so inflammatory, it's crazy, right? So 
it's really about a few things like kind of takeaways is really getting the processed foods out of your lifestyle and breaking it down to one ingredient whole food. So what's in an apple, an apple, what's in an avocado, an avocado. So you can base your entire day, all your meals and all your snacks around these one ingredient whole foods. So, you know, just toss out the, the processed salad dressings, the condiments, you know, make your own and, and get back to basics, you know, and, Again, we're not all living like little house in the prairie here. We don't have time, but you don't need to make some extra extravagant meal every day. You know, things can be very basic, which is why I put over 200 recipes in this book, because I wanted people to realize that it doesn't have to be exhausting and painful um, and confusing to cook. So really pulling those inflammatory foods out of your lifestyle. And I break that down in my book and talk about all the anti-inflammatory foods that you can use. But even more so, looking around your home and your lifestyle and what you're doing every day, removing toxic people from your lifestyle, removing the stress that just isn't needed, um, and you know, feeling guilty, all of that kind of stuff that's just like not helping your body function, and the chemicals that are in your lifestyle. So we talked about dish detergent, and we talked about um, you know, deodorant, shampoos, conditioners, things like that. I love it, and it's so important. And you know, once you start kind of discovering these things, just take one step at a time. So warriors, like I didn't yeah. cut out gluten and dairy and, you know, whatever else, like all overnight, you know, well, the gluten thing I did cut out overnight, but it was <laughs> literally because it was, it, to me, it felt like life or death, you know, totally. but the point is, is like, once you start down this path, it's like now I, Alex, am ready for like, the laundry detergent and shampoo and face wash and like it's like now i'm literally about to like start stocking my house up with that kind of stuff would i have been there a year ago maybe not but now i am you know so totally and i agree i feel the same way same same thing with me with like the inner work i would have never meditated a year ago you know mm. so you have to re be really patient with yourself and um just learn how to trust and you know, just follow, just follow your footsteps, write down some goals that you want to do and things you want to do. And every few months, you know, look at them in terms of like cleaning up your lifestyle and, and changes that you want to make and, and start moving towards that. Yeah. And I think what's really cool about what you just said is it reminds me that there are many ways to higher consciousness, right? So this whole food journey for you opened up this idea of inner work. Whereas like for me, it was like inner work opened up this idea of like food and all that stuff. So realize that, realize that it's all, it's all connected and all part of the same goal, which is just to make you a more conscious human being so you can live a life you love. Literally, that's it. That's the highest yeah. intention of everything we're talking about and doing on this planet. And so if you want to know more. That's so well said. I love that. If you want to know more from Amy, uh, she has this amazing 21-day uh, detox plan where you can literally figure out what, you know, is contributing to the things in your body. So you can literally listen to your body. And she makes it very simple. And so I'd really recommend if this episode has resonated with you in any way to go check out that book and just explore, experiment and have thank fun. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have um like a link? Do you want me to add a link to the bottom at the bottom of this to the book, or should I give yeah, the name? Well, the, should I give the name of yeah, it? Yeah, give okay. the name for sure. Okay. So it's called Eating Clean: The Twenty One Day Plan to Detox, Fight Inflammation, and Reset Your Body. And they can find that on your website, right? Yes, and it's on Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, Costco, Sam's Clubs, Whole Foods Market. Um, so it's it's out there. It's you know you'll see it. Beautiful. And the link will also be in the episode description, guys. So thank you so much, Amy, for coming on. This was beautiful. And everybody, get on it. It's so important. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. You're amazing. I really appreciate it.